We proudly present Hollywood. The Radio Theater brings you Margaret O'Brien and Lionel Barrymore in Captain January. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Eight-year-old Margaret O'Brien. Margaret has hurried home to co-star with one of the screen's most beloved actors, Lionel Barrymore. They appear in Captain January from 20th Century Fox. The story of a bluff, warm-hearted lighthouse keeper to whom the sea delivers a devoted partner for his lonely life, a little girl named Star. We're off to Cape Tempest on the lonely coast of Maine and the first act of our play, featuring two Metro-Golden-Mare favorites, Margaret O'Brien as Star and Lionel Barrymore as Captain January. In from the northeast roars a biting winter gale, lashing the rocky coast of Maine, whipping the dull green Atlantic into a white frenzy of foam. Somewhere in the mad mountainous sea, a sailing vessel rolls and pitches, her decks awash beneath the heavy waves. In a last desperate plea for mercy, she lifts her spars to the black sky, and then with a shudder, the gallant craft slips downward to her grave. Where's the minister? Here, Bob. What is it? Mr. Winthrop, Captain January wants you. He found a small boat just off Great Rock. He dragged it up on the beach. A boat from the Huntress? Yes, sir. And there was someone in it. I'll take you there, sir. Never mind. I'll find you myself. Captain January. January. Over here. Take care of them rocks, sir. What heavens? What heavens said you wanted me? I did, sir. But it's too late. He's gone. She? Who? A passenger off the Huntress. In the drift half a day in an open boat. Come over this way, sir. There she is, Mr. Winter. This woman has been dead for hours. Yes. Died saving the little one. Her arms around her, keeping the... The little one? Look here, sir. Under the tarpaulin. Why? It's a baby. <laughs> Smiling like a little angel. That's the way she was when I took her from her mother's arms. Captain, we'll have to bring this child up to the village at once. Oh, please, now. If it's all the same to you, I'll just bring her along to my place. Your place? The lighthouse? Oh, why not, sir? I'm cozy up there, and you see... Well, sir, it's, it's like she was delivered into my hands. Uh, like the Lord might have asked me to take care of her for a while. You're a good man, Captain. All right, take her along to the lighthouse. If anyone inquires after her, I'll let you know. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Up you go, child. Wait. Did you find anything that might give us a clue as to who this child is? No, sir. No. Only this locket. It was held tight in the woman's hand. Uh, she, she'll have to have a name, though, won't she? What kind of a name is there for a baby girl washed up on the beach? With the stars just coming out, when the... Hi, that's it. Star, that's your name, child. We're going to call you Star. Star, Star, did you hear that? Six thirty. Here I am, Cat. But what would you like for breakfast? What will I have for breakfast? Six thirty, almost time for lunch. Won't you sit down? No breakfast in half a day, God. Oh, you're not really angry. When I was a child, you could fool me, but not anymore. 
I know when you're just pretending. Yes, uh, ain't you forgetting something? I don't think so. Let me see. I made my bed. I brushed my teeth. Oh, it's my birthday. Yes, ma'am. And I suppose you're just waiting for me to hand over a present. A cat present? Where is it? Oh, please let me see it. <laughs> no breakfast yet, and she wants a present. Besides, I didn't say I had one, you know. I only said that... Oh, you always have a present. You never once forgot. Oh, I always give you a spank, too. One for every year when we have that. Not now after breakfast. I feel tougher after breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and don't go slipping any shingles in the seat of your britches like you did the last time. That spanking hurt me more than it did you. Honest, I didn't know that there was a nail in it. <laughs> <laughs> Been a long time, hasn't it, Cap? Long time? I mean, since you and me shipped together. Yeah, eight years today, stop. That's why you're having your birthday. But I must be more than eight years old. Well, you may be. Ten or so. I don't know exactly. For all we know, maybe I'm 30, huh? Hmm? Maybe. But I, I think it's highly improbable. Cap, what did I look like when you fished me out of the water? I had to wring you out and hang you up to dry. Tell me all about the storm again. Ah, you heard about that storm every birthday. But it gets to be a bigger storm every time you tell it. <laughs> How many miles did you swim? Torn the lifeboat with me in your teeth. I had the tow rope in my teeth, not you. <laughs> the last time you told me it was me. Well, you, you, you're a year older now. <laughs> <laughs> Star, you ever get lonely here? Lonely? Well, it ain't much of a life. Living in a lighthouse. No company except me. Who else would I want? Well, I was thinking maybe... Maybe this ain't the right kind of life for a youngster. Maybe... Maybe you ought to go away somewhere else. Would you like to, Star? Hmm? No, I wouldn't. But if you keep saying that, I will go away. And I'll never come back either. Oh, don't you know by now I'm never going to leave here? Well, I'd just like to make sure once in a while I'm doing right. That you really want to stay, right? That's all. Wait, do I do? And that's the end of it. All right, honey. All right, all right. Uh, here now. I'll let you have your birthday present. Oh, Cap, what is it? Yeah. You like it? Why, it's a locket. Oh, it's beautiful. Where did you get it? It was in your mother's hand the night I found you. There's a picture inside of it. Cap, I'll open it. It's... Is that my mother? I reckon it is. Your mother and you. It must have been taken soon after you was born. She, she was very beautiful, wasn't she? Ah, uh, I... And you're a lot like her. I've saved it all these years till I thought she was big enough to know what it was. I'm going to keep this forever and ever. Thanks, Cap. <laughs> And Kat says I look a lot like her. That's funny, isn't it, Emma Jean? I mean, me being beautiful. But you never can tell, can you, Emma Jean? I may grow up to be beautiful. After all, I bet you weren't so much to look at when you were my age. But you're beautiful now, Emma Jean, and I love you very much. Well, what do you say? <coughs> That's better. Ah! Oh, you finished that milk in your in a minute. Hurry up, Emma Jean. If you hurry, I'll let you go in the village. The village? Yeah, there's a few things we need from the store. Would you like to go? Sure, I would. Emma Jean, would you please cooperate a little? Mm. I've got to go to the village. Mm. Oh, sir. Morning, Captain Jerry. Ah, hello. Captain Nazro. Happy birthday. Thanks. I come over to the lighthouse tonight, Captain Nazro? Well, January ain't invited me yet. Well, I'm inviting you right now. Cap and I are having this surprise party all by ourselves. Well, you better warn him. I'm coming. There's times I get the idea that 
January ain't exactly partial to me. Oh, don't worry. I'll tell him to behave. Goodbye, Captain Nazro. See you tonight. I'll be there. Good morning, Mr. Cox. Morning, Star. What can I do for you? You need another p- case of brass polish. Better send it over right away. And don't forget what we get off for being government. It'll be there tomorrow, Star. Tomorrow? We need it today. Well, I'll try, but there's a lot of summer folks up here already keeping me hopping. I'll do the best I can. All right. Oh, um, how much are these lollipops? Three cents apiece. Three cents? What about the government discount? Oh, sorry. Two cents for you, Star. Thanks. So long, Mr. Clark. So long. Oh, uh, Mr. Clark. Oh, yes, Mrs. Morgan. Who is the little girl? A star. Why, uh, she's Captain January's girl. He's the lighthouse keeper. I wonder why I haven't seen her in school. Well, I guess the teacher was here before wasn't very strict about things like that. That's why she isn't here now. I think I'll have a talk with that child. <laughs> me go to school, and I said I wouldn't. I was very polite, Cap, honest. But I said I had to go home. Good for you. And go on, what happened then? Well, the next thing you know, she had me by the ear, dragging me along the street. Oh, she did, huh? What'd you do? Well, one thing led to another thing, and before you know it, she sat down. On a chair? No, on the street. Well, how'd that happen? I don't know. I can't figure it out. Hmm. She tripped, huh? Well, what'd she say then? I didn't wait to hear. I just ran. <laughs> it's a good idea. Well, forget about it. She can't do anything mean to us, can she? Can't. Ah, of course not. Remember, I work for the government. I am the government here. Yes, but I think she's government, too. Uh, don't worry about it. This is your birthday. Oh, yeah. Open up find out. Oh, it's Captain Nazro. Nazro. Come in, Captain. Evening. Uh, blind my eyes. Can't I even give a birthday party without you barging in? Oh, pipe down, you old cat of office. Here, honey. Here's your present. Thank you. This Captain, that's a present. Yeah. It ain't much, honey. No better than it. It's a doll. A doll, huh? Well, 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 well. Well, what of it? Oh, it's beautiful, Captain Nazro. Thank you very much. Cap, aren't you going to invite Captain Nazro to our surprise party? Well, I wasn't counting on it. But since he's here, sit down, Nazro. Good. I'll fix the place for him. Whether you was counting on it or not, I'm going to stay for a while. Oh, you are, are you? Yes, I are. Yeah. Time I was doing a little inspecting around this here lighthouse. Must be daft in Washington appointing you an inspector. Well, you don't know the difference between a telescope and a tar barrel. The way you handle them, I guess there ain't any. Hmm. Look at that brass work. That brass was clean till you rubbed your dirty glove on it. Why, you found-bound old derelict, if you wasn't my host, I'd fire you right now. If you wasn't my guest, I'd quit. Come and get it, Sager. You know, it's nice to see you two getting on for a change. Yeah. Yeah. You, Captain Nazo, you sit here. Thank you, Star. Say, what's that thing there? What do you think it is? It's a cake. Right pretty. Cat made it all himself. No, he did. I guess I'll just eat the candle. Uh, listen here, you no good dick swamp. Cat, stop it. Now you sit right down and behave yourself. Come in, the door's open. Good evening. My goodness, it's the school teacher. Oh, which one of you is Captain January, please? I'm Captain January. Well, I'm Mrs. Morgan, the new teacher. Oh, sit down, ma'am. Captain January, why isn't this child in school? Well, I was aiming to send her next year. We have a compulsory education law, and this child is old enough. How does she know how old I am? We don't even know ourselves. Don't be impudent. I'm not being impudent. I From just... what I observe, this child is being brought up entirely without control. She's rude, disrespectful. Ah, now, hold on, hold on. What's more, this child is adopted. It's well within the power of the authorities to send her to an institution if you fail to raise her properly. Taken from me? What? Just a minute, Mrs. Morgan. You're talking through your crow's nest when you say Star's been brought up ignorant. 
She reads writing and she writes down reading better than any eight-year-old on this coast. What do you mean, eight-year-old? There ain't a ten, eleven-year-old from here in Newfoundland that knows as much as star. No, now any twelve-year-old as far as that goes. Or thirteen or fourteen. Say, maybe I am thirty. <laughs> Well, I've been learning her from the best two books there is, the Bible and Bowditch. And just what is Bowditch, please? You've never heard of Bowditch? Why, that's one of the greatest books ever written. American Practical Navigation by Nathaniel Bowditch. Fine reading for a girl of her age. Uh, any objections to the Bible? Let me tell you, ma'am. Uh, let me tell you, ma'am. They ain't better reading in the world than the Bible and Bowditch. They both learn you to steer a straight course. I didn't come here to discuss reading matter. Hmm. Please have a report to the schoolhouse next Tuesday. And since you seem to think she has the intelligence of a child of ten, we'll call her ten and give her the test for that age. Wait, wait, maybe I'm only seven or so. Well, I'll stand by ten. Tuesday morning, please. Good night. Cap, what was she talking about? A, an institution? Oh, don't you worry head about that. Nazaro. Uh, I'd like to speak to you for a minute. But the party... Hey, it's something about the light, Star. Come on up the light, Nazaro. Well, you certainly are a lover, January. What was the idea of insisting that Star was as smart as a girl of ten? Well, she is, ain't she? Sure, but why make it tough for yourself? Ooh, ooh. I reckon I did put my foot into it. After all, Star doesn't even belong to you, you know. Doesn't belong to me? That's what I said. You've got no legal right to her. You've never even adopted her. She's more than adopted. She's part of me. That's all right, but that ain't the law. When you fished her out of the water, you should have tried to find if she had any folks. I did try. Yes, you did. Well, I tried for a while. I couldn't keep trying forever, could I? Anyway, she has no folks. They're all dead. Are they? How do you know? Well, they never come for her. No one's even asked for her. And you're just hoping they never will. Uh, what business is that of yours? She's mine. Nobody's ever going to take her from me. Lobsters, eat your lobsters. Lobster here. Lobster, right from the water. Lobster. Fresh from the water. Fifteen stands. Hello. Well, lobsters, baby lobsters, fresh from the water. What you got there? Lobsters? No, they're shrimp, but don't tell anybody. Lobsters. You can't fool me. They're lobsters. All right, they're lobsters. Now go away, will you? Get your lobsters. Do you live in this place? Lobsters, fresh from the water. I said, do you live in this place? Get your lobsters. Just being sand. I come from New York. Oh, tourists. Lobsters, fresh from the water. Uh, do these things bite? Certainly they bite. I don't believe it. Look, little boy, go away, will you? Oh, I want to see if they bite. Well, if you have to, you have to. Go ahead. Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh. See, they bite. Lobsters, fresh from the water. How about a nice lobster, lady? Fifteen cents. <laughs> no, thank you. Best you've ever tasted. Just take one home and try. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... I'm living at the hotel. Uh, you see, I'm a tourist, too. Oh, I really didn't mean that. He was just getting fresh. I know. I was standing over there watching you. I wonder... I wonder if you'd tell me something. Sure what? Where you got that locket you're wearing. Oh, that? Cat gave it to me. He's my father. Captain January. Your father? I see. Oh, Lois. Hey, where have you been? Oh, come here, Bruce. Have you some change? I want to buy some lobster. Uh, lobster? <laughs> what for? Oh, it's all right, lady. I don't want you to buy them if you can't use them. Oh, real little native, aren't you? No, sir. I wasn't born here, if that's what you mean. You weren't? Where were you born? I don't know. That sounds funny, doesn't it? Oh, but you said your father... Uh... Oh, Cap? Uh... Oh, he's not really my father. You see, he found me and... Well, what are you looking at me that way for? Go on, dear. What were you saying? I wasn't saying anything. I have to go home now. I'm late. Excuse me. Oh, wait. Your lobster. Oh, they'll be all right. Goodbye. Bruce. Laura, what is it? You look as if... Are you ill, Laura? Bruce, listen to me. That child. I must know who she is. 
find out, Bonnie. I must know her name. Act two of Captain January, starring Margaret O'Brien and Lionel Barrymore, will come to you in a moment. Victor Herbert was easily the crown prince of American operetta. Much of his work, in fact, is set in the Bavaria he had known as a boy. And the spirit of Irish and Bavarian folk songs is obvious in his music. But Herbert took this foreign flavor and distilled it into something typically American. The operetta, the musical extravaganza, Naughty Marietta, and the standard Ah, Sweet Mystery of Life. Babes in Toyland, a continual delight to the young of all ages. These and many other musical contributions of The Minstrel for the Million will never die or grow old. And neither will another of Victor Herbert's contributions to the world and the world of music. His formation with eight others of ASCAP, American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, an association that all but ended musical piracy in the United States. There are thousands of people who owe a debt of gratitude to Victor Herbert for that single act. There are millions who are ever grateful for his music. Curtain rises on our second act, presenting Margaret O'Brien as Star and Lionel Barrymore as Captain January. A few days have passed, and Tuesday has rolled around. Fateful Tuesday, when Star is to appear before the school board for her examination. She has told Captain January nothing of her meeting with the lady on the mainland. So the captain's only worry is how to help Star pass. Alone in the lighthouse, he studies a book of grammar. His brow is furrowed with deep lines as he struggles with the conjugation of the verb to be. I was, you were, he was. We were, you were, they was. Were. Ah, that can't be right. Something's all mixed up here. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Why didn't I go to school instead of running off to sea? Morning, Cat. Oh, hello. What you doing? Oh, nothing. I thought you were going to help me with my examination. Oh, well, I am, I am. Uh, let's see. How about starting off with a little grammar? Grammar? Oh, no. No, no, no. They won't ask you anything about grammar. Uh, we'll begin with arithmetic. Uh, recite the multiplication by five table. Cat, that's kid stuff. Huh? We've got to make it tougher than that. Well, all right. We'll do the sixth table. Go ahead. Oh, but that's for baby, seven years old. Seven years old, and they know the multiplication by six tables? Sure they do. <laughs> I never even heard of it till I was 23. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's get on to geography. Geography, I like that. Oh, you do. Well, here we go now. Uh... 
If you were sailing from Boston Harbor to China, to what point of the compass would you turn the nose on the second day out? Perhaps I don't think that's the way they'd ask it. No? Why not? Well, Captain Nazro says... Nazro, Nazro. Always Nazro. Did I hear my name mentioned? Well, what do you want? Nothing with you, you desiccated old crawfish. But I thought I'd come and help Star get ready for the examination. You being so illiterate. Me? Illiterate? Well, I can spell you down, read you down, and figure you down. I can do it with my hands tied behind my back. Oh, no, you couldn't. You need your fingers to count on. Oh, is that so? Well, you can't count over ten without taking your shoes off. Look, gentlemen, this isn't going to help me pass that examination. She's right, but this might help. What is it? Well, you see, Star, I figured it might help things along if we knew the questions they was going to ask. Uh, this here is the examination paper. I, uh, I borrowed it from the schoolroom. Captain Nazro, that's cheating. It is. Of course it is, isn't it, Cap? <coughs> well, uh, that's a very delicate point, but we'll talk about that some other time. Uh, let me see that paper, Nazro. Hey, uh... Hmm. Now, Star, the first question. If a field is eight to seven and a half rods long and 43 and a quarter rods wide, what is the length of the diagonal drawn from the northeast corner to the southwest corner? Prove it. Well, what's the answer? What's the answer, Nadro? Well, uh... Uh, how much is a rod? How many fathoms? <laughs> Would it do you any good to know? No. Well, then keep quiet. <laughs> uh, hmm. Prove that heat expands. Wait a minute, what's that? That's the second question. But we didn't get the answer to the first one. Well, we're skipping the first one. <laughs> Prove that heat expands. Prove that heat expands. Mm. What does it mean? Well, it means prove that heat makes things bigger. Mm. Well, let's see. Sure it does. Look. It's hot in the summertime, isn't it? Well, the days are longer in the summer than they are in winter. Well? Well, Nero? Well, that sounds logical to me. <laughs> yes, sir. One hundred percent. See, this isn't so hard. What's the number three? Uh, number three. Well, write down from memory the quality of mercy speech from Merchant of Venice. The quality of mercy is not strained. Hmm. Is that all? I think it goes on from there. Hmm. But that's all I know. Ah, this is a put-up job. That hatchet-faced school teacher is just trying to frame us. Let me see that paper. There's no child of ten could answer this stuff. I, 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 I can't even answer it myself. Well, wait, wait. I, I, I think I made a mistake. What? Well, this here's a high school examination. I... High school? So you can't even steal proper. <laughs> well, it said examination, didn't it? How was I to know there's different tests for different ages? Uh, that's right. How was you to know? You never passed a ten-year-old test, did you? Well, I could have passed one. Yeah, maybe when you was full-grown... Excuse me for interrupting, but I have to leave for school soon. Yeah, yeah, but... Say, now, with me telling that Morgan woman I was teaching stuff in the Bible, they eh, eh, pretty apt to be some questions about the Bible. Well, there ain't many children as up in the book as she is. Ah, I know, I know. So, what are the four Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Ah, <laughs> fine, you remember that story I read you last week about the prodigal son? Uh-huh. The father said, bring out the fat of cats and kill it and let us eat and be merry. <laughs> Correct. But uh, everybody wasn't merry, Star. There was a brother and there was neighbors. Now, who was sorry that the prodigal son come back? The fat of cats. Oh, no. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the school board, 
I think you know why we are here today. This child, Star January, is to take the 10-year-old test. Sit over there, please. Thank you. We also have another student here, a little gentleman from New York. Gerald is going to summer school this year. What is sitting next to her? Please, dear. Oh. Uh, Judge Hardrow. Oh, uh, yeah? Judge, I've invited you here for a very special reason. I don't believe this little girl is being booked up properly, but I'll let you determine that for yourself. Uh, begin the examination, Mrs. Morgan. <clears throat> now, uh, children, on the blackboard is a drawing of eight fishing schooners. Excuse me, but they aren't schooners, Mrs. Morgan. They're catches. What's that? You said schooners, but they're really catches. I don't believe that makes any difference. Oh, but it does. You see, a schooner carries its mismatch amidship. And a catch is more like a yaw. You see? That will be enough, please. Yes, ma'am. On the blackboard, we have eight, uh, eight catches. If four could carry a load of 100 tons of fish, and four could carry twice as much, how many tons could they all carry half-filled? Well, Star? Well, in the first place, I don't think you can get 100 tons of fish on a catch. That's not the question. But the boat would sink. Be quiet. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Gerald? Do you know the answer? Half will be able to carry 600 tons of fish. Not on top of the water. No muffling, please. <laughs> Thank you, Gerald. Now, Star, will you please define a relative pronoun? A relative pronoun? A relative pronoun. Surely you know that. No, no, no. A pronoun is a pronoun that connects two clauses and has its antecedents in the other clause. Very yes. good, Gerald. Wow. And now we'll discuss literature. Joe, will you please tell us in your own words the story of one of William Shakespeare's plays? Well, uh, once there was a man named Romeo, and there was a girl, a Juliet. Uh, go on, dear. Well, uh, her family was called... The uh, Capulet. The uh, Capulet. And his family were named... Uh, Monaghan. Star, will you please stop annoying Gerald? But I'm not annoying him, Mrs. Morgan. I'm just trying to help him. Who are you? And just what do you know, the story of Romeo and Juliet? Oh, we have it over at the lighthouse. I've read it twice. And you understood it, of course. Oh, yes. You see, these Montagues and Capulets, they hated each other like poison. Never mind. So Romeo and Juliet, they couldn't meet. So they met in the garden, shot on the fly. I beg your pardon. They couldn't get married on kind of old folks who weren't on speaking terms. So this Juliet, she takes a drug and knocks herself cold. <laughs> And stick in a box and ship her off to a vault. It's as cold as a herring in there, and Romeo thinks she's a gunner. Just then a fellow named Paris walks in, and they get into a scrap. Just a moment. What a battle. Romeo stabs Paris. Paris stabs Romeo. Will you please? Romeo stabs Paris. It's a fight to the finish. And the next thing you know, Paris is on the ground, stabbed through the kiddo. Oh! <laughs> What, what was that? <laughs> and then Romeo. Stop it at once. Look, you see what I mean. Yes, yes, I see, oh, I see. You see the kind of bring up she's had. What are we going to do with her? You put her in the eighth grade. She's wonderful. <laughs> Great, he said. Put her in the eighth grade. <laughs> Here, Nazo, have some more try that. Thanks. <laughs> Pretty good for a fellow that never had much book learning. What's book learning got to do with cider? I'm talking about educating the star so good that she jumps right into the eighth grade. You educate her. It's the things I learned her that put her through. Ah, you. Who is it? It's Winthrop, Captain. The minister. Oh, come in, sir. Come in, come in. Morning, Captain. Good morning, sir. Nazro. Morning, Mr. Winthrop. Hey, if it's Star you come to see, she's in school. Eighth grade. I came to see you, January. Hmm? About her. Well, what is it? Bad news? Depends on the way you look at it. Captain, uh, a lady came to my house yesterday. A lady and a gentleman. Their name is Easton. They're visitors here. Well? They asked me a lot about Star. About where she came from and... How long ago? I told him about the night you found her on the beach. Oh, you told him. We talked for a long time, Captain. And I told him I would bring them out here tonight. You see, they want to take Star. They want to bring her to Boston to give her a home there. Why? 
Why? Because... Because from what they told me, I have no doubt that... that Star is Mrs. Houston's niece. time, Captain January, and all we heard was that my sister had been lost in the shipwreck. When we came back to America, we tried to learn more about it, but they told us that everyone had been lost. Then we came up here. When I saw the child, I almost knew then she looked so much like my sister. And then the locket. I know she's my niece, Captain January. She's my sister's child. What if she is, Captain? What if she is, I say? What have you done for her? Did you ever take her out of the sea? Did you swear to the Lord that to help save her, you'd do as should be done by her? Have you worked and sweated for her and lived in fear that someday she might be taken away from you? Huh? Have you? Captain January. Uh, well, I'm sorry, ma'am. Please believe me. I know what this means to you. And if it weren't for the child's own good, I wouldn't ask you to let me take her. We can give her everything she wants, Captain. A home, schooling, and more important, I think we can make her happy. For the child's own good, huh? Well, there's a thought there, isn't it? There's something to hold on to. You say you can prove that she's your niece? We have the passenger list from the Huntress. The mother and child were both registered. And then there's the locket. There was a picture in it. My sister and her baby taken when she was a year old. My sister was wearing a white dress, smiling and looking down at the child. Is is that picture still there? Yes, it's there. I don't think there's any question that Mrs. Easton is far as aunt, Captain. No, there's no question. Then you'll let us take her. Lord, give us... The Lord takes us away. So I'll ask you to do it easy. It'll be sudden like for the girls, you know, and then then she ain't used to being took sudden. My way is being slow. We'll be very careful. Captain, where are you? Oh, Come in, Star. Come in. Uh, This lady is Mrs. Easton, and this is Mr. Easton. Hello, Star. Hello. You remember me, don't you? Yes, I met you on the docks one day. You were going to buy some lobsters. That's right. Well, I I guess you want to talk. I'd better go upstairs. Oh, please don't go. You see, we want to talk to you. Star, do you remember my asking about that locket you were wearing? May I see it now? I haven't got it. Who is it, Star? I haven't got it. I see. Star? You keep that locket in the box over there, don't you? I think you better get it for us, darling. Why does she look at me? Why does she want it? Why does she look at me that way? Because this lady is your aunt, Star. My aunt? Yeah, your own kin, darling. I haven't any kin, you know that. I haven't anybody but you. Tell her to go away. I don't like anybody looking at me the way she does. I don't belong to her. I belong to you. Easy, darling. No, easy. Elm said it now. Star, your aunt wants to take you to live with her. Through the providence of God, she's been led here to you, and she feels it's her duty to claim you in the name of your parents. I won't go with her. I've lived here ever since I can remember. I won't go. Cap, why don't you say something? Don't you hear they're trying to take me away? They have a right to you, child. A right to me? Do you want me to go away? Do you? Are you tired of me? Well, honey, I, uh... I'm an old man now. And, uh... And an old man likes quiet, you see. And, uh... Well, I'd be quieter by myself. So... Well, maybe it's all for the best. No, Captain, no. You've never, ever said anything like that to me before. All you thought about was me. I told you I'd never go away. And then you'd be happy. And now... I tell you that I'm needing rest and quiet as suiting to an old man. I kept you here for eight whole years. What thanks do I get? 
hanging on to me and hanging on to me. If you want me to stay right out, child, I will. I want you to go off with these folks and leave me alone. Well, if, if that's the way you feel about it. Yes, yes. All right, I'll go. I'll go and never come back. I'll go, do you hear? Never, never. May God forgive me for the things I said to the child. May God forgive me. I know he didn't mean it, Lord. He's only making believe. So please let me stay here, Lord. Please let me stay with Cap. They can't take me away if he won't let them. And hiding that locket really wasn't dishonest, was it? And if it was, please forgive me. Because if, because if they have that locket, then they know I belong to them. And I don't. I belong to Cap. I belong here. Oh, please, Lord, please let me stay. Please. After a brief intermission, Lionel Barrymore and Margaret O'Brien will return in Act Three of Captain January. You can. Leave. We'll return you now to Mr. Keeley. After the play, we'll bring Margaret O'Brien and Lionel Barrymore back to the footlights for a brief chat. Here they are in the final act of Captain January. <laughs> It's dawn of the next day. On the rocky beach near the lighthouse, Captain January stands looking out at the angry sea. All night long, he's walked the path between the rocks and the lighthouse gate. His hair is rumpled by the wind, his eyes bright and feeble. From the road comes Captain Maslow to stand quietly beside him. It takes not to storm. Aye. He blow on a gale by evening. Evening. They'll be coming for her then. They'll be coming for Star to take her away. January, I was wondering if, uh, well, it'll be mighty lonesome here for you for a while. Why don't you come into the village and live with me? Live with you? It's comfortable. Food is good. We'll be taking care of the light. Well, the, uh, light will take care of itself. Hmm. You see, uh, they're going to install automatic equipment. What's that? Look here. This, uh, this telegram came last night. Mm-hmm. Read it, January. Uh, 30th this month, automatic equipment will be installed in lighthouses, 8, 9, and 10. Inform all keepers their services will be no longer required. Um, yes, yes. I'm sorry, Captain. Of course, there'll be a pension for you. A pension? Uh, There's a fine life for an active man like myself. (laughs) Easy, Captain. Uh, Sitting in a soft chair waiting for a check each month. Nothing to do but wait and think. Easy, man. Why, you're sick, January. You better come inside. I'm not sick. You're feverish. Now, come along. No. I can look after myself. All right. I'll be in the village if you need me. Cap, I've been waiting all day for you to come back. What's the matter? Aren't you going to talk to me? There's nothing left to say. I only want to hear one thing. You weren't telling the truth last night, were you? You don't want me to go away, do you? Please, Cap, tell me. I'm trying to do what's best. I know you didn't mean it. You couldn't. I don't believe you, then any you believe me. So I said I wanted to go. Not a question of wanting. Why isn't it? They can't take me away if I won't go. And the blackest thing is the only thing that'll prove anything. 
And I can't find it. No one will ever find it. There's more than the lucky star for you. The way you come here and... Well, I just... I can't explain it to you. I can't think somehow. It's all dark and misty. You mean I gotta go with them? Is that what you mean? Yes, star. But not because you want me to go. You don't, do you? Who wants you to go? Well, star, how can you say that? Oh, Cap, Cap. There, there, now, now, now. It, it, it's a fine life you'll have, darling. I'll be coming to see you as often as they let me. me often, maybe. And yeah, they're good people. Cap, what if they hadn't come? We'd go on living just the same, wouldn't we? You wouldn't be talking of a fine life then. We'd live just like we were, wouldn't we? Aye, but they did come. Then why don't we run away? What's that? We were always talking about going someplace else. We, why, why, we could take the sea boat and go down the coast and no one would know us. Oh, Star, don't be saying such things. I can't, I can't think, I tell you. I put the food in the boat. We could sail for days and days. Oh, we could. They'd find us. They'd bring us back. No, they wouldn't. Please, Cap, I'll get the boat ready. We'll be gone before dark. It's the wrong thing, Star. It's wrong. It's wrong. It isn't wrong. And we're going, do you hear? We're going. Everything aboard. All set. Get in the boat. Oh, wait. Wait, I forgot about energy. I'll turn her loose. I'll be right back. Hurry back, sir. Anyway, anyway, what are you doing down here? Uh, out of my way, I'm busy. You're going to take this boat out in the sea like this? I can handle any boat in any kind of sea. Where are you going? I'm taking Star away. Oh, don't be a fool. You can't do that. You're sick. Sick am I? You're raging with fever right now. You'd never be thinking of such a thing. Get out of my way. I won't. You're not leaving with that child if I have to knock you down and sit on you. Now get off of this boat. Get off. You know, Nero, you and me have had a lot of fights. But I always thought that down deep you was my friend. I am your friend. You, you let him come here and take Star away from me and you call yourself my friend? Oh, it's for the best, January. Come on up to the lighthouse. Let me go now. Let, let me alone or I'll bring you. Are you crazy, man? Stop it. Stop it. Let him go. Let him go. What are you doing to him? Let him go. Star, you're not leaving here tonight. We are. We have to. No one's going to stop us. You or any other. Star, he's not himself. Can't you see? He's raving mad. He's a sick man, Star. Sick? Would he be taking a boat out tonight if he knew what he was doing? Let me go. Any boat in any sea. We're ready, Star. Come on, we're ready. We. We. Cap, Cap what's the matter? Cap! Pa, go get the doctor. Quick. All you can tell us, Doctor. That's all, Mrs. Easton. He's a very sick man. Well, what about the little girl? I mean her staying here. We don't want to take her away. It'll have bad effects. He's barely conscious now. It might be just as well if she weren't here. I've already told her that she's to go with you. You'll keep us informed, Doctor. Of course. Laura, where is Doc? I've allowed her to see him for a moment. He'll be right down. <laughs> I wouldn't be leaving now. Only, only the doctor says I ought to. But when you wake up, I, I'm going to try to be back. And don't forget, you're going to come and see me whenever they let you. And maybe, maybe oftener. And when you're not there, I'll be thinking of you. I'll be thinking of the cat. All the time. I've been looking all over for you. Uncle Bruce will be back from New York soon. He'll want to see you. Yes, ma'am. 
Esau, what's the matter? Aren't you happy here, dear? You seem wonderful to me, Aunt Laura. I never, I never had such pretty clothes and things. But that's not enough, is it? Oh, I didn't mean it like that. I've had everything here. You and Uncle Boot. Why, you've been wonderful. You've even brought the speech out, thinking it may make me feel better. Well, it does, only... Da, dear, you don't have to explain it to me. I know how you feel. Have you... Have you heard from Cap lately? Mm, just that he's a lot better. You've been writing to him every day, haven't you? Yes, he answered too. Only, you know, Cap, he's not so strong on spelling. <laughs> and Laura, now that he's better, do you think we can go and see him sometime? Well, we'll have to wait and see it. Hello? Oh, there's Uncle Bruce. Come on, darling, he has a surprise for you. Hello, Laura. Hello, dear. Well, Star. Hello, Uncle Bruce. Did you bring it, Bruce? I certainly did. Here, Star. Look out the window, down by the dock. Why, it's a boat. <laughs> you like it? Oh, it's beautiful. It's, all, it's almost a yacht, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty nearly. Come on down. Take a look at it. Did you sail it up from New York, Uncle Bruce? All the way. I started last night. It's awful big, isn't Don't it? Don't argue with me, old oh, little brain. I've sailed cups in every season that was ever charted. Why, it's Cap. Oh, Cap, Cap. Ah, God, darling. Oh, Cap, I thought you had forgotten me. Forgotten you? Would I forget the north and the south? <laughs> Would I now? How did you get here? What you doing? I'm captain of this craft. That's what I'm doing. And I'm the first mate. Captain Nelson. Yes, sir, he's the second mate. First mate. Thank you. First Second, ah! second, second. Oh, gee, it's wonderful to see you two in such good terms again. your producer, Mr. Keeley. Back to the microphone comes Margaret O'Brien with her seafaring partner, Lionel Barrymore. Margaret, we're glad we got you back in time for tonight's play. I enjoyed so much playing opposite Mr. Barrymore again. He helped me so much on the picture we just finished making. Oh, oh well, thanks, Margaret. Thank you. know, you've always been my very favorite leading lady. And, Lionel, I want you to know how much I have personally enjoyed your being with us on this stage. You're the only one of the Barrymore family I haven't had the great good fortune to have played with. Oh, well, feeling mutual, Bill. Well, good night. Good night. Good night, Margaret. Good night, Lionel. <laughs> this is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Uh,